So let's get started again. So, so far we have been looking at different techniques that we can use to represent uh, business processes and the aim is to gain understanding of how activities are performed, how specific goals are achieved, and generally how these activities together can be combined to create value. But it's very important that it doesn't matter which technique you are using. You have to verify whether this understanding of the, how the system works is true or not. I remember uh, when I worked as, a, as an auditor, we used to, to have uh, assignments with different uh, companies. And part of the, uh, of the job, besides checking their accounts, is in the end to give them advice on how they can improve uh, their business. So our, our senior manager always uh, used to tell us that the first thing that you have to do on the first day of the assignment is to understand the business of the client. So we literally go through all the business processes within that particular organization. And that is very easy because if you're working on, as an auditor, you want to check whether the financial statements that the organization presents uh, actually represent the true, true uh, image or true picture of that organization. But in order to do that, you have to verify the, the various transactions. For instance, if you are, you are reviewing uh, uh, profit and loss uh, 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 statement, all the items that are, are involved, for instance, the expenses that the, the organization has incurred in a particular uh, in a particular year, the sales. In order to verify this, you need to understand the processes that are involved. So it's very important you have a clear understanding, but the perception you have of how, the, how these processes are taking place may not be true. So you need to come to a point where you have to validate your understanding. And this is true when it comes to system analysis. You as an expert, you may be very successful by using one of these techniques to map how the process occurs. And this is true when you are trying to improve the current system or when you are trying to propose a new system. You need to come to a point where you have to validate. And validation is when you describe the process that you, are, you, are, you have uh, mapped and see whether that uh, process actually represents what you think it represents. And this involves three uh, activities. One is what we call talk through. And that is where after representing the process, you come up with a model and then you describe this uh, to, to different st stakeholders within an organization how uh, the, the process works. So you want to verify whether your understanding of the process is actually what uh, the process uh, is. So you, you actually present your model and show how different objects within that process interact uh, with one another, just to be sure whether what you, what you understand is, is correct or the perception you have of the, uh, of the process is correct. And then, you have uh, what we call uh, a walkthrough uh, stage. And with this stage, you try to provide scenarios, uh, details of different uh, scenarios, the different activities uh, that, has, uh, that are involved in a particular uh, object, and you are trying to see how actually the system would work if users were actually using that system. So in this case, for instance, you are trying to propose a new system and we have mapped that system. We have talked through it like you have uh, demonstrated how the model works. And now you, have to, you want to go to what, do what we call walk through. That is take users and other stakeholders within an organization through all the uh, different scenarios that are involved in this uh, particular uh, process. And the objective for doing walk through are uh, two. Fold. First is to get feedback uh, from uh, the, the users and also to familiarize, uh, to, to get the audience used to, to the proposed uh, system. And finally, we, we do what we call a, a run through, whereby 
the entire uh, process uh, is executed and we, we want to see how the whole process works. So this is in case of a proposed uh, new uh, process. So we have mapped our process, we have seen how the different objects or different activities are interact together in the process. Now we want to run it through, see how the process uh, actually function. So this is something that we do when we are improving uh, uh, a system, that we have suggested uh, a system where you have pre presented your uh, model, you have walked through the, your uh, audience on how the system works, so now you are running through. So this is an example of a, a design team running through a, a website and the different uh, functions that are performed on that particular uh, website. So the point that you have to, to note from this is in the end, no matter which uh, technique you have used to map your process, you have to validate whether this uh, process uh, works as you have perceived or not. Another, uh, the second part that we will discuss today is uh, system uh, design, and that is uh, after understanding uh, the processes and identifying all the activities that form processes within an organization, as I said in the beginning that the goal is to see how we can improve uh, uh, the performance of our business by using digital uh, technologies, which means after understanding, it's not enough to just understanding how the process work. We also need to see how we can improve the current uh, process. And that's what takes us to the, uh, this uh, uh, stage of system design. If you can look back uh, uh, or you can recall the system development cycle uh, we saw earlier, analysis is followed by understanding of the requirements. But in this case, we, 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 we assume that if you are able to identify the different activities and we have uh, mapped where these activities are taking place and who is responsible. So we assume that uh, understanding requirements of different users that are involved in these uh, activities or requirements of different individuals uh, that are involved in the, these activities will be part of the uh, uh, analysis stage. So now we want to design uh, a new system uh, that will be part of improvement initiative or uh, part of the initiative to improve the performance of current uh, system. What it means uh, by uh, system design is a definition of how uh, a system should operate. So it's all about defining the, 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 the architecture, the, the, the components that are making the system, the modules, different interfaces, data of a particular system in order to specify, uh, to satisfy particular requirements. So it's all about uh, coming up with a definition of how the system that you are proposing or uh, w the improvement that you are desiring in your organization, how should they be improved, uh, implemented? So the structure of that system that you are, you are, you are, you are suggesting, how can users interact with that uh, system, the different uh, uh, components, the different data that are used uh, or will be involved in this system is what we call uh, systems uh, design. And this can be divided into three uh, uh, categories. At, at the highest level, we can look at the architectural design, and this is about the physical components that are involved in a particular uh, uh, system. That is the layout of the various components that are involved in building a particular system. And then we can look at the logical design and this is the abstract representation of the uh, data flows, the, uh, the, the inputs and the output of the, of the system. So it's a, a very uh, abstract uh, representation of how the system uh, works in terms of the inputs the flows and uh, output. And finally, we look at the physical design. And this is concerned about uh, the interaction between humans that use a particular system and the system that we are trying to, to 
build. So it's concerned uh, with like how uh, data is input into the system, how users are verified, how the data is processed, how is it displayed. So it's basically the, the interaction between the users and the systems that we are trying to uh, build. So we, you have to take into account all these uh, uh, types or forms of uh, uh, design in, when we are proposing uh, uh, a new, or when we are designing a new uh, digital uh, system. It's the same content. So we will talk a little bit about uh, uh, architectural design of digital business systems, and that is the, the component uh, uh, layout uh, of the digital systems that are uh, of a typical uh, digital uh, system. And basically, most of the uh, digital systems are based on this uh, traditional model, which is called the client uh, server model. And the clients are the PCs uh, that, that are used either by employees or uh, customers. So the, the computers are linked to a server through a particular network. And we call it uh, a client service because of the interaction between the server and the client. The clients, in this case, are the, the PCs. But of course, this is a, a very uh, traditional representation. Today, we know that we, there is increasing use of uh, mobile devices, smartphones, tablets. So the client is no longer uh, a, a stationary PC, but it could be any device that uh, someone uh, uses to interact with the server where uh, storage uh, takes place. And these, as, uh, as I said, are connected through a network. So this is uh, a basic structure of how a, a digital uh, system is, uh, uh, looks like in, a, in an organization. So usually you will have uh, a client pieces where various applications uh, are, are represented to the, or are made available to the users. And you have uh, the server, which could be, uh, could uh, which could store the, those applications and the, 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 the data. And the, this sort of interaction is what we call uh, uh, a client-server model. So this is the basic understanding of uh, the architectural design of uh, digital uh, systems. Now, the key questions Oh, the key uh, question that you have to consider as a, as, as a manager, we know that usually these things will be handled by IT people in your organization. But the reason we are discussing them here is because we just want you to have a, a basic understanding. So you can, eat, at some point, the IT people will need your, your help, regardless of which, your, which department uh, you're working uh, in. As a user, they will consult you when implementing uh, digital solutions, and we want you to have uh, at least a basic understanding of, uh, of what uh, they are doing so that you can collaborate with them effectively. So typical uh, managerial decisions that, uh, or man management decision that we are concerned with when it comes to architectural design of a digital system is uh, where actually we, we store the, the, the data, that is the data storage. Where do we keep this data? And usually this is kept on, on the server. So that's uh, pretty easy. And then uh, we are concerned about query processing. Uh, query processing is about how do we retrieve uh, the information and the different rules that are implemented in retrieval of uh, information, all the criteria that are involved and the uh, information retrieval, whether these are implemented on the uh, client, that is the, the PC or the device that we use uh, to interact with the server, or this uh, query processing happens on the uh, server. Traditionally, this is uh, done on the uh, server, but also it is possible to do some sort of validation on the, on the client as well. And then you have uh, the display where the 
the, the results of whatever processing we are, data processing uh, we have done happens and this is intuitive, this, this display of the results usually is done on the client uh, PC because that's where uh, a user interacts uh, with the system or is where the user is able to interact uh, with the system. And then uh, the, the application logic and that is application logic re represent is about the actual processing uh, of data. So this is what we call uh, a three-tier client uh, server uh, model, whereby you have uh, a client PC. This is uh, connected to the servers through a, a network. It's, in this case, the internet is very uh, common way of uh, co connecting uh, the client PC with the servers. Of course, we could also talk about uh, the, the intranets, uh, where it's a local connection within an organization. But this is a, a, an illustration of uh, the three-tier client server, where you have uh, the, uh, the client uh, PC, and various applications are used by users in an organization. So we have uh, the server for the applications, and then we have uh, the database. And this form three tiers. Uh, of the architecture uh, of uh, digital system within an orga organization. But of course, that is, is a representation for learning purposes. In reality, this is, could be even much more uh, complex. Multiple servers are, are involved when, when it comes to how people actually do uh, business. So the three tier is just a model for understanding how actually uh, the digital system operates, but in reality, that network uh, uh, of uh, elements or components could be as complex as what we, we see in this uh, diagram, where you have multiple servers dedicated for different uh, uh, functions. As part of design, we, 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 we have a concept of what we call user-centered uh, design, and this is very critical for uh, managers. And it's something that you need to learn early on as you are trying to develop skills and knowledge about systems uh, design. We know that in the end, these systems that we are building or the digital solutions that we are implementing in an organization will be used by humans, will be used by people, some of them do not even have technical uh, background. So you need to have uh, in focus the users of a particular uh, solution that you're proposing. So for instance, like in the beginning, we, we saw how we could map uh, a particular process and activities, and we could see possibilities for suggesting uh, solutions. Like we, you can propose uh, eliminating some manual uh, activities and implement digital solutions. But it's very important as part of design to think about the users because no matter how cool the solution that we are uh, proposing is, if eventually the users are not comfortable with the new solution, then it's useless. So we need to focus on uh, proposing solutions that actually uh, will be uh, friendly or will be easily uh, 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 applied by, by the users. And this is the whole point of user-centered uh, design. That is putting the user of a system or for a particular solution at the center of uh, design uh, process. So there are a couple of questions that you need to answer as part of user-centered uh, uh, design. And this is an example of uh, user-centered site design, that whenever you are uh, designing a, a website as a platform uh, for interacting with your, say, your, your customers and other stakeholders, these are some of the questions that you, you can answer as a way of putting into focus uh, the, the user. So, for instance, uh, you will ask yourself, who are the users? And this is the first and foremost uh, question. You need to identify who is going to use uh, that website. And what is their purpose of accessing uh, 
the site. That is, what do they want to achieve from that, uh, from accessing your website? How, uh, how frequent, how often do, do they visit your website? What kind of experience and uh, expertise do they have? There is a difference for designing a website for experienced users and for people that are quite novice to the use of, uh, say, internet. Of course, these days, uh, everybody is becoming experienced and an expert in using uh, uh, internet and related technologies, but still you need to ask yourself the expertise and experience of those that are going to use your solution. So in this case, it's website, but it applies to every digital solution that you will propose. You have to think about the expertise or experience of the people that will use your digital uh, solution. What nationality are they? Can they read English? And we mention, we talk about English because uh, this is, uh, English is becoming a lingua franca of uh, business. It's like a, a common language in, in business. But of course, depending on the context, it could be any other language. If you are, uh, you are target uh, users are uh, Norwegians, then probably you will have Norwegian, Norske as uh, your uh, priority or first option uh, language to, to consider that the content should be represented in a language that you think your uh, users will be much more comfortable uh, with. The type of information that your users are looking for and how do they want to use that information? What type of browser do they use? And how, what kind of screen are they using? What kind of screen uh, your typical uh, users uh, use? We will see this later when we see how to develop uh, or how to create a persona for a, a website. Why are we concerned with these uh, questions? Answers to all these questions will help you to contribute to what we call an online customer experience. That you want to provide a solution that we maximize or will make your uh, experience of your customers uh, great. So you want to improve the experience of your, your customers. And by being able to understand or to get answers to all these questions, then you will know what you should provide to, to these customers. So in this case, like where the design is about a website, if you are able to get answers to all these questions, like what type of uh, users are they? What kind of information do they want? What expertise do they want? Do, do they have? You will be able to design a website that will maximize the online uh, experience of your, your customers. And why are we concerned about the experience uh, of customers? Uh, uh, well, online experience of customers is because of research results like this. This is a study that was conducted in 2012. And these are responses from a quite sizable uh, sample uh, of customers. One of the questions was uh, that whether an online experience influenced whether they purchased or not purchase uh, the, the product, product or service from a particular brand. And 97% said yes, that the kind of experience they have uh, on a website determined whether they purchased or they didn't purchase uh, a product from a particular brand. And this you have 65% um, of customers said where uh, an online experience uh, changed their opinion about a particular brand or the products and services uh, that they offer. So the perception that customers will have your uh, on your brand, on your products, will be partly influenced, at least according to this study, by the design of the website, uh, that the kind of online experience uh, they get from your, your brand or from your business, from your, or from your services. And then you have 58% of customers that were willing to recommend a product based on the online experience they had from a particular brand and 73% said they would consider buying again from a particular brand because of the superior experience they had with the website. And then you have 89% uh, of customers saying 
they will switch to another uh, service provider. They will buy from another brand simply because they had a negative, terrible experience with a particular uh, uh, brand or online experience. So this goes uh, to, to show that it's very important to put into uh, focus or to put the users, in this case your customers, at the center of design process, which means if you will not be involved directly in the design task, at least as a manager of, or a digital business manager, you should be able uh, to, to challenge the website design uh, team that they have to put users at the center of their, of their focus. This is the whole point from uh, this uh, results. Now, it's very common that ma many people think about customer experience in terms of usability or accessibility of the website. That as long as my website is on the air, people can access it, they can use it, then that's all about online customer experience. But actually, online customer experience is more than that. It involves a number of uh, rational factors as well as emotional factors. Rational factors, that is, factors that are really tangible and some emotional factors that determine satisfaction of a, a customer when they interact with your, your website. So this is an, a whole set of uh, factors that together determine online uh, customer experience. And these are based on research. And as you can see, usability and accessibility is just one aspect. Uh, of online customer uh, experience, or it's just one, uh, two factors determining uh, online uh, customer experience, but you have a, a lot of other factors that contribute or determine uh, uh, online customer experience. And this can be divided into three uh, main uh, layers. Uh, the first one is uh, rational values, and these are tangible uh, factors, as, as I said, and it consists of uh, how easy it is to use your website. Uh, that, that's where we talk about uh, usability. We will discuss a little bit more about usability in a couple of seconds. And accessibility, whether people can easily use your website and they can access it. Relevance, whether the website contains what people are, your, what your customers are actually looking for. And performance, speed, availability. So these are tangible uh, factors, but also there are emo emotional values, emotional factors, intangible factors that also determine online experience. On one side, you have a uh, design of the website, the visual design, how does the website uh, look like, the style, the graphics, and so on. And then you, you, on the other side, you have reassurance, trust and credibility of, of the website. Could be very easy to use, they have relevant content, the performance is superb, the design is cool, but if people don't trust it, they won't use it. So you have to build the credibility. And we, we, we uh, talked about these factors uh, earlier when we were talking about managing customer information, how to build the trust uh, with g digital uh, platforms. And then finally you have uh, promise experience. So factors like uh, price, uh, of your uh, products, the product range that people can get from your uh, website, the interaction with your uh, platform, service, like how fast it is to do you fulfill the orders for, uh, for in, in case of, uh, uh, for instance, online retailer. How uh, quick it takes to place an order online and actually uh, receive a, an, an item. Uh, uh, so we are talking about how long it takes to, uh, to, to deliver a product, and this is part of uh, uh, service uh, quality. And what happens when people buy your products? Do they get any support uh, uh, after buying the products? For instance, uh, do you attend to their uh, questions in, in case they have difficulties in using your products and so on? So all these factors have to be taken into account and Together, they determine the kind of experience that 
customers will have with your uh, platform. And the objective is to optimize each of these uh, factors. You, you want to be to fare uh, quite high on each of these factors that determine online uh, experience. So we, I will emphasize, uh, emphasize uh, a little bit on usability because uh, this is uh, uh, an issue, of course, to, to, to most uh, businesses that are employing digital solutions that we are proposing and we are implementing uh, solutions. But uh, unfortunately, some of these solutions or some of these uh, technologies that we are proposing are actually not usable. And uh, this is because right in the beginning, probably we didn't take into account, uh, uh, into account uh, uh, the users of a particular system that we are, uh, we are proposing. So what usability actually means is uh, the extent to which whether a product or a system uh, uh, delivers or uh, the users can, uh, can easily achieve uh, their goals effectively and efficient, efficiently. And of course, being satisfied with what the system uh, does. So it's the, the possibility of users to use your, your system and achieve their, their, their goals effectively and efficiently. And this is one of the things that we want to achieve or we, we want to consider when we are designing uh, new systems. Now, when you are making assessment of uh, usability, so suppose you have uh, proposed uh, a new system and you want to check whether this system is usable or not, we have two activities that uh, you can consider. One is expert review and finally usability or user testing. By expert review is uh, where you present uh, the, the system or a prototype of the system. You remember when we talked about change management. A, pr a prototype is uh, like a model, a, a sample system. Like. So you are presenting this to uh, an experienced usability expert, people that are used to uh, assessing usability of systems. So you're presenting them to, to them so that they can go through the system and identify any weaknesses and propose uh, improvements uh, to, the, to, to the system based on their experience and the knowledge they have. After that stage, still we know that this is an expert. This is uh, expert opinion. But we, know, we recognize that in the end, this system will be used by ordinary users. So we have also to get a sample of actual users of a particular uh, system that we want to, to build and get their opinion. And that's where we do what we call usability or user testing, where a particular user is actually uh, given the uh, opportunity to try the system that we are, we are proposing and to see how the system uh, works. And this involves three uh, activities. First, you identify uh, a representative that is a typical user of the system that you are, you are building or you are trying to design. And then you ask them to perform uh, particular tasks that are involved in that uh, process or in that uh, uh, solution that you are uh, proposing. So for instance, in, in, in case of a website, for, you can ask, for instance, uh, a user to find a product from your your website, and then you see how do they do that? How easy it is for someone or for an ordinary user to find a product from your website? Or an activity could be completing an order. So you actually ask a typical user to complete an order, and then you observe whether if this is something that can easily be done by a typical user uh, or not. So you observe and see whether they uh, perform this uh, easily. And we are looking for two uh, things. First is effectiveness and second is uh, efficiency. That is, we want to make sure that the users can easily accomplish uh, the, their goals using the system that we are, we are, the system or solution we are uh, presenting. 
but accomplishing the, the goal is not enough. We also need to make sure that this is done efficiently. That is, we measure how long it takes uh, to complete a particular task. So we want to make sure that this is done as fast as possible. So it, we have to achieve the goals in, that is effectiveness, but also we need to think about uh, efficiency, that this is done uh, timely. Now, to help this as part of uh, design, we can use what we call personas. And in this case, we will use an example for web design uh, personas. A persona is a typical user of, the, of the, your system, or in this case, a typical user of your website. So it all starts by defining uh, an, an individual with a particular characteristics, needs, motivations, and environment of a typical uh, user of your, say, website. So a typical user of, uh, say, of your website with particular characteristics, with particular needs, motivations in a particular uh, uh, environment is what we call uh, a persona. And we want to build our website based on this uh, uh, person. And this involves three uh, stages. First, you need to identify the characteristics of your, of your typical uh, user of the system you're proposing. In this case, we are talking about uh, website uh, design. So we want first to identify characteristics of a particular, of a typical user of our, uh, 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 of our website. And this involves identifying, identification of uh, demographic factors such as their age, sex, education, occupation, and for instance, in, ca in case of business-to-business -business, uh, 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 context, we want to s consider the company size and the position in the buying unit. And then we also need to think about psychographic uh, factors, that is, the goals, what kind of activities they will perform on the uh, website, what motivation do they have for interacting with the website. And then you have to consider webographics, and that is factors that are related to access and, and use of the website. For instance, their, their web experience, where do they access the web from, which device do they use, which browser uh, do they use. So these are factors related to the access of the website. And finally, the type of connection they use. So this is on the part of de uh, defining the attributes of your user. And then you need to uh, uh, understand uh, that this is just a representation. So usually you have different kind of users and it, it might be difficult to capture all these type of users. So you have to consider those are, that are typical users of your organization. And usually they say three, four uh, representatives are enough, but the more representatives you have, then the better, uh, the better picture you have of how your website should uh, look like. But from these uh, users, you have to identify uh, a, a, a primary. Uh, first, you need uh, to create different scenarios. That is the kind different, you have to think of the different activities that people uh, will do on your websites, or for that matter, in, on any system that you are, you are proposing. But then you have to think about identifying a primary uh, persona. So you have created a profile of potential users of your site, but now you want to identify the primary persona. And a, a, a primary uh, persona is that representative or typical user of your website that is strategically important for you, that the most important uh, representative of the system or the most typical user of your website. And this is uh, obviously because we want to give priority to those that are most likely to use our uh, system. So we want to identify these uh, people first and their needs and their, their characteristics and how they interact with our system. But also you may consider uh, con uh, uh, secondary personas. These are people that have more, it, almost all of the needs of the primary personas, 
but they have some extra uh, additions that you need to consider. For instance, uh, on a website, probably you have a small group section of uh, uh, customers that they need special kind of uh, interface with your website. So this will be a sort of, uh, we can consider them as secondary uh, personas. But you have to make sure that uh, these, the needs of these uh, uh, personary, uh, secondary personas do not compromise uh, your ability uh, to satisfy the needs of the primary personas. So you are designing your website with the primary personas in mind that, that are the most typical users of your website. You can think about this category of users, but make sure that in, fulf in fulfilling the needs of these, you don't compromise the needs of your typical or primary uh, personas. And finally, you can consider uh, what we call complementary uh, personas. These are unique uh, users of your website. People that are not typical to your website, they show up once in a while, but they help you to think out of the box by considering needs of uh, those that are not typical to you, uh, of your users, then it helps you to think about how you can improve uh, your website. And sometimes when you have such unique users of your system or for your website, they will help you uh, to think about new solutions that maybe uh, they might be liked by primary users and secondary uh, users. So it's four o'clock, I think we'll stop here today. And the next time we will start, we will talk about customer experience uh, management. And I think by tomorrow I'll be able to know whether on Friday we will have just presentations or we will have uh, some lectures and a le part of the lecture and partly presentations. It depends on the feedback I, I, I get from uh, the groups that I, I, I posted today. <laughs>